We know that linear equations can be written out in the standard form and the slope-intercept form, but there's also another way to write out a linear equation. It is known as the point-slope form. In this video, let's learn about the point-slope form of linear equations. Now, before we start this lesson, we'd like to encourage you to watch our linear equation videos in the following order. So without further ado, let's dive right into learning about the point-slope form. This form is particularly good to use when the information provided is of a single point of a line and the slope of a line. These two pieces of information are enough to complete a linear equation and if we are indeed given a point and a slope, then it is only fitting that we would use the point-slope form to most easily get the final linear equation. Good. So, let us present to you the point-slope form. Now, the first thing to note here is the m variable. Just like how the m is representative of the slope in the slope-intercept form, the same applies for the point-slope form. We know that the x and the y variables will remain as letters since those are our variables. But then, what is this x1 and this y1? Well, the x1 and y1 stands for the x-y coordinates of the point that we are given. And since it is a specific x-y point that we are given, this is why we label this specific point as x1 and y1. All right, so let's go through an example together to get a hang of this. So if I gave you a point on a line graph, such as two, negative four, and I said that the slope of the graph is three, then we should be able to simply plug these values into our formula to get the point slope form of the equation of this graph. Notice how our negative four gets inputted as a negative number. Once we simplify the subtraction of this negative number, it becomes no different from the addition of 4. So, there is our equation in the point-slope form. Now, normally when we are asked to get the equation of a line, most people tend to simplify linear equations down to the more popular slope-intercept form. Alright, so let's say that we were asked to manipulate this equation into the slope-intercept form. Here are two different answers from two students. One of the student's answers is correct, and the other's is incorrect. Which student wrote the correct answer for this equation in the slope-intercept form? Well, let's figure this out. The first thing to do here is to distribute this 3 on the right side. What we get is this. At this point, the answer becomes easy. We subtract 4 on both sides, and it becomes obvious then that student B has the right answer. Awesome! Now, let's go through another example together. This time, instead of being provided a point and a slope, let's say that we are being provided two points of a line and no slope. If the question wants us to use the point-slope form to find the answer, and then finish the answer off as a slope-intercept form, how could we go about doing this? Now, before you try this, here's a small hint for you. Try using a concept we learned from the Intro to Slopes video to help you solve this question. So, what would the final slope-intercept form of this question be? Well, before we start using numbers, let's come up with a strategy for this question. We already learned from our Intro to Slopes video that all we need are two points on a line to find the slope. So why not use these two points to find the line slope? And from there on, since we would already have a slope, we would just need to use any of the two points and the slope to plug into the point-slope form. And of course, from the point-slope form, we simplify it to the slope-intercept form. Awesome! So let's try this out. We know that the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this would be 5 minus 3 
over negative 3 minus 1. If we simplify this, what we get is 2 over negative 4, which reduces down to negative 1 over 2. All right, now we need a point on the line to plug into our point slope form here. And since we're given two points, we can just choose any one of them. So let's choose one and three and plug them into the formula along with our new found slope of negative half. What we get is the following as our equation in the point slope form. Now to take it into the slope intercept form, all we need to do is isolate y so that it's the only term on the left side. So let's distribute the negative half on this side to both terms to get this. And then let's add both sides by three to isolate y, and we get the following as our final answer in the slope intercept form. Great, and you might be wondering, what if we had used the other point instead? Well, let's go ahead and try it. Here's what we get when we plug in the values for this other point. When we simplify this, we get x plus three, and this would be the equation in point slope form. So now to find slope intercept form again, we distribute this value to each term to get the following. Now we just need to add five to both sides, and what we get is this. As we can see, this is indeed the same answer as our previous one when we used the other point. So we figured out that we can actually use any of the two points to arrive upon the same answer. Awesome! Well then, that's the end of this lesson. We hope you go over this concept a couple of times to solidify what we've just learned here. But until next time, have a good one.